In this video, we're going to explore some of the different methods that you can adjust machining attributes and properties in feature turn. And what we have here on the screen is a derivative of the spool wheel uh, lab that, uh, that you did in module six. And um, what we'll do here is just kind of briefly go over some of the different operations that I have set up uh, and then we'll simulate this and identify some issues with the program that we need to correct. Now over here in the toolbox on the left hand side of the user interface you'll see that in the setup menu we have four operations associated with this part. We have a hole and you'll note that when I click on each one of these different features it is shown on the screen uh, highlighted in red. So we have the hole, in this case here it's a drilled hole, pilot hole. Then we have a board uh, internal turning operation. And then we have the outside diameter turning operation. And finally we have a cutoff operation which cuts the part off and uh, removes it from the stock. So um, now if we look at, obviously you can see that this is a, the outside diameter feature here is what we're going to pay particular attention to in this simulation. So I've got the simulation set to run at half speed and we'll go ahead and run it. And when we do that, we note that not all of, or the particular tool that we had was unable to complete the machining operation. If we eject the simulation, you'll see that this is supposed to be the same radius in this corner as it is on the left-hand side of the part. So in this case, feature turn recognizes that the operation cannot be completed. And we can see that in the results window, we have a couple of warning tags that are associated with our turning pass. And if I hover over those warning tags, feature turn tells me that an undercut has been detected and it's unable to completely rough the feature with this tool. And again, feature turn has that built-in safety that prevents the undercut or prevents the crash and it only machines as much material as it can with the particular tool that you have selected. So that's one thing that we're going to have to, uh, we're going to, have to uh, correct. So if we select the manufacturing menu and select machining attributes, we have the machining attributes window that opens. And you'll note that there are several tabs at the top of the window. In this case, we have the drilling tab where we can set different parameters uh, related to drilling operations in our part program, whether or not we want to use a stop, uh, spot drill, uh, attempt to chamfer with the spot, spot drill, and so on. Um, pecking, and this is relative to drilling. In this case here, uh, we can set peck percentages for drilling and tapping uh, as percentages of the drill diameter. We can select turn bore, where we talk about different uh, roughing depths of cut. Those can be adjusted here by default. Threading, grooving, cutoff, bar feeds, miscellaneous options, and operations. Okay, so to correct the problem with the undercut issue that we've identified in our part, again, we'll run a quick simulation in this right-hand corner, is we'll go ahead and add in an additional turned feature using the same curve. And I'll go ahead and walk you through that process. So over in the toolbox, we'll select the steps panel and we'll create a feature. Of course, before we do that, we'll have to eject the simulation. And then we'll click on icon number seven for a new feature. And what type of feature do we want to make? This will be a turning feature. We're going to create a turn feature from a curve. And we're going to create that feature from curve one. And you can see curve one is highlighted. Again, this is just a duplicate feature from the previous curve that we've created, or the previous feature that we've created from curve one. I'm gonna just create a duplicate right over the top of it. You'll see that we see the wireframe of our feature. We'll click Next. And now what we want to do is because we were unable to catch this right-hand corner with the tool that we had set up, we're going to change our roughing and finishing passes to cut in the positive direction. Right now it's currently set to the negative. And note the orientation of our tool icon. When we click positive, that changes. And that's more what we're looking for, you can see. Uh, up here in this icon, it's switched to show that the direction of the cut in this case here would be positive. So we'll click Next. We'll click Next again. Now look at our tool. Again, this tool 
is just slightly obtuse for what we're looking for uh, to ensure that it completely gets in this corner. So we want to change this tool to the same tool that we're using for the initial turning pass, which is the 35 degree diamond. So we'll click next. We'll select the 35 degree diamond and we'll use the back turning selection and you'll see that the tool is oriented properly. Although you'll note that the insert appears to be on the bottom of the holder. Well, that's correct because in this case here, we are going to be uh, the tool turret orientation of the tool um, needs to be reversed because the spindle direction is going to be rotating in the same direction. So we'll click next, click next again, and you'll note that for our finishing pass, the tool remains oriented in the, or the tool selection and the orientation is the same as the roughing. Click through and select next again. It looks like we're done. And we select finish. Okay. And then we can hit okay. And we'll go back to our part view and you'll see our turning pass is turn two now. And just because I'm concerned with the turning pass, I'll go ahead and deselect setup one. And then I'm going to just select turn one and turn two. And now we'll run the simulation again. And you'll note that we've got the problem is resolved in that we are uh, machining the area that was uh, that was being bypassed during turn one. However, we've got a undercut over here on this side, uh, on the left side of the part. And it was during the turning pass, it was machining error uh, or it was unnecessarily machining error uh, from the material that's already been removed from uh, from turn one, from the turn one operation. So let's slow that down and we'll run it one more time. Here's our turn one operation. Cutter machines as much as it can. Takes a finish pass. Goes for a tool change. And here comes our second tool, and you'll see we're just machining air, and we have an undercut on the left-hand side of the of the uh, part here. And we don't want that. We want what we want this cutter to do is we want it to machine only the material that is that that it needs to machine in this right-hand corner. So to do that, what we're going to do is we'll eject the simulation, and we'll go to the manufacturing menu, click on machining attributes. We'll select the miscellaneous tab, and in the miscellaneous tab, you'll note that there's a, a, a checkbox called remachining, and we want to check that. And what remachining means is that feature turn will recognize uh, areas that have already had material removed and will automatically bypass those areas and only cut the material that it needs to um, in order to complete the task. So we've checked on remachining. Let's check OK. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run the simulation, and when we do that, you note that some of the problem has been corrected. In other words, we're not cutting air anymore along the x-axis. However, we're, we're still making unnecessary moves to the left side of the part here. Um, and again, we still have the undercut problem, and uh, um, that needs to be resolved. In other words, the tool is traversing. It's attempting to follow the curve that, uh, we, that we've told it to follow. Um, when in fact, it really doesn't need to track that entire curve. In other words, we can establish a boundary, or what we'll call a left boundary, to tell the cutter that it doesn't need to go any further to the left than a certain uh, point that we're going to pre-establish. In this case here, about two inches in from the end of the part is really all that, uh, that we need in order to make sure this, this corner is properly machined. So we'll double click on turn two, and then we'll click on the roughing pass and check the turning tab. And you'll see this left boundary in the attributes for the roughing cut. And if I click on that, it will tell us where do I want the left boundary to be established. I can enter the value or I can just pick the point on the screen. And what I want to do is eject the simulation. And then I'm going to pick my point and I'm going to set that point right here. And when I click that, you'll see the area highlighted and I'm going to apply it and then hit OK. 
And now when I run the simulation, it machines only the material that it needs to. So let's go ahead and machine the whole part. We'll run our simulation in isometric mode. Hit play. And the part is complete. And if I do a 3D orbit, I can see that all of the features have been machined properly. There are no tool crashes that have been indicated. You don't see any magenta areas, which is good. And everything looks um, to be in order with this particular part. Mm -hmm.